Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and this is episode 28 in my Automate Everything Minecraft series. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing a few things, but first off, I'm going to be expanding my reactor right here to connect up and be able to power these four turbines that I built between episodes. Now, the thing is, this is actually a pretty easy thing to do. The first thing I need to do is to um, take the top off uh, the current reactor. And I'm not too worried about the blocks uh, disappearing or me losing them. And because of all this ender here, you can hear blocks teleporting around. But that's not really a big, big deal. I'm not worried about that at all. Okay, now that we have the top taken off, I would like to collect the ender. And I would like to store it so that we can move it up as we need. So let's go ahead and do that. And that should be my eight buckets. And actually, it would be better if I were to do something like this. Real fast. Okay, there we go. That'll work a little better. I need that last bucket. Okay, that should be all of the ender. Whoops. And now what we can do is we can pick this bad boy up. And haul it up with us as we need. Okay, let's um, grab some reactor casing blocks. And now we just need to build up. Actually, should have done the other corner first, I think. Yeah. Anyways, we just essentially have to build this up to... I guess I don't even need to match the height, but it's it'll look better if I do, at least for right now. So I'm just going to match the height of the highest turbine. And then that'll be nice. Um, in addition, let's go ahead and round off the top, or at least the top over here. Whoops. And then let's do this last corner. Okay, that is perfect, actually. I wish it would not be raining. In fact, I might go to sleep to stop the rain, hopefully. Yeah, let's try that. Um, I have also grown my main building. Uh, I plan to put some stuff up here, but uh, nothing's final, I guess. But we're not going to get to that this episode. We're going to focus on the reactor first so we can get some more power so that I can maybe build some more void ore miners or even upgrade my current void ore miners. Um, I have two currently, I think. No, 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 no. I have one currently, but um, I have another one that is a void resource miner. So now that we have all of that done, let's go ahead and take the fuel rods up. Let's also... Uh, grab some of this stuff. That way we're not too wasteful. And almost there. Uh, I think one more. Yes. Because we still need room for the uh, cap at the top. Uh, I think that's perfect. And that is one too high, but that's not a problem. Let's get our caps. I did bring spare caps with me because I was assuming that maybe I would lose one or two of them, but uh, that did not happen, so that's cool. Now I have a builder's wand, and this will make the rest of this pretty easy. We will have to um, watch out for these blocks right here because I kind of figured that would happen. Let's go ahead and take that up, and then we'll do this. Boom. And then we're going to have to worry about this again. Oh, do I not have enough glass? I don't. I'm out of glass. So let's grab some more. Reactor glass, if I remember right. And we are definitely going to have to make more of this. So let's just type in a big number. And 
and let's make sure we don't have any actually that almost perfectly worked out clips okay and once again we're out we have more on the way it's taking a little longer than I would have hoped but that's okay oh I'm stuck Okay, I think we need just a little bit more and we're waiting on graphite. But that should cook up pretty fast. Okay, so we're making this and then we should convert to making. Cool. Okay, so. Oh, we're gonna be close. I don't think we're gonna have quite enough. Now we should. Okay, so I have to be careful here and just to be safe, let's build kind of a ledge here. And then Did I get those blocks? I did not. So, did I get these? I did not get this one. I can see that. I did get that one. Okay. So, that should be all good. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that block. Now, we need to put the ender back in. So, let's get our tank. Let's set it up, say, something like right here. And then we can start placing this stuff. So just like last time, we're going to have to do something like this to make this work. And then let's move all our buckets like so. Let's actually do this. So we will need the pick. Actually, we'll need uh, some of the cobblestone as well. So enter there. And I'm only placing the ender where I strictly need it. Just to be kind of economical, I guess. Okay, so we have something like eight more to place or something like that. Okay. So. Okay, do I have on the sides here? I do have on the, on the sides of all the rods, so. So yeah, I'm gonna be, whoops. I'm going to place that there. I'm going to be one bucket short, but I should have that over here. Perfect. Okay, so now that we got all that done, let's uh, reorganize this inventory real fast. And then we can place on the top. And I don't know that a builder's wand will really help up here just because of these control rods in the middle here, which kind of make things a little bit slower so we're not gonna even bother whipping it out okay so hopefully it forms up it does so I'm I'm gonna guesstimate that we need these two things in 50% um, these turbines right here actually have ludicrate instead of platinum which does require a little bit more steam which I have a guesstimation at 1440 I've used these things before I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's like 1440 or 1450 but anyways, we need to turn this thing on and see where we're at. Um, it does look like maybe we're a little bit low. So 1440 times 4 would be, I don't know. Yeah, it's more than this. Because then we still have the 1100 or whatever that the other, the platinum turbines need. So let's just crank this down to 30% and let's see what's going on. Okay, so we are definitely getting enough steam here. So 7960 seems to be exactly how much steam we need to make. Um, and we're claiming temperature. So let's dial this back a little bit to 35%. And see where we're at. We're still climbing temperature-wise pretty good. So let's, uh, let's go even more. Let's go to 40 
And while we're up here, I might as well grab this guy. Because I don't really need it for right now. Okay, let's try this again. Still climbing. Okay, so we're still, still hot. So let's try 45. I know for a fact that 50 wasn't enough. Okay, so our temperatures are... Seem to be pretty even. So let's try something like 47. And if they start coming down, I'm just going to leave it be for right now. And then hopefully... Um, can check on it later. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna move it to 48. And then I'm going to leave it alone for a while. And then I'm going to move on. Okay, so that should be all right. And if it's not, I can always just tune it back to 47%. So that's cool. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is throw in acceleration cards into my uh, molecular assemblers down here. Because currently they are just kind of slow. These things, I mean, they're not really slow. But they're, they're not exactly speed demons or anything. But if we throw in acceleration cards, which we have a bunch of because they're not too hard to make. They're just pure fluids with advanced cards. So each each um, acceleration card needs one calculation, or uh, each two acceleration cards needs one calculation processor. So that's not too bad. So I built a bunch of them in preparation for this. And what we need to do is just simply shift click, and then we will have acceleration cards in here. And these things will be much, much faster now, which is nice to know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these off camera because it's just a simple shift click procedure. And then I'm going to be right back. Okay, I have all of the acceleration cards installed. I needed 200 of them as I have 40 molecular assemblers down here and each of them required 5 acceleration cards. So I used 200 of those, so that's 100 uh, calculation processors, which isn't too bad as I have like 2900 of them apparently. So that's all nice and dandy. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is set up an automation for something that would typically be kind of difficult to automate, but we're gonna do it anyways. And that is for the uh, sir, pure, f the pure flux crystals and the pure surface crystals. I could also set up for the pure nether quartz crystals, but I don't know that I ever actually need to use these things. So I'm not going to worry about it. Now there's actually a way to do this um, using the phytogenic isolator. That uses glowstone. And I actually think it takes a little while for these things to go through. So I'm going to set it up in a different way than that. I'm going to be using a kind of vanilla mechanic to help me out. And I don't know how many of you guys recognize this. But this would be a or part of a vanilla sorting system. And I'm, I'm actually going to use this to my advantage today. I might have to walk back out here to take a look at it because I haven't built these things in a while. And I actually had to look this up online how to do it. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be using this mechanic. I knew it existed. I just didn't quite know how to build it uh, in a compact way. And hopefully this all works out pretty well. Now, I will need to grab some stuff for this. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to be using droppers. So let's get another dropper. I need two, one for each system. Um, let's grab some crystal growth accelerators. I don't think I have this automated yet, but I have built them in the past and let's go ahead and build some more. Uh, I don't know if I have flux blocks automated. I don't think I do, so yes. And let's get back to this. What don't I have? That flux block. Okay, so I just need to throw this in here and then it should work out all right. There we go. And I'm going to need seven of these. At least how I plan to make this. So let's grab those. In addition, let's grab a couple of modular storage units. And I have two of them made. Let's grab a couple of these guys. Uh, we're going to need, let's do some item conduit. I don't have that automated. Let's go ahead and automate that while we're here. Where, oh, where's the item conduit? 
right here. Cool, that should be more than enough. We are going to need at least two ME interfaces. Uh, we should only need two, to be honest. So let's grab two. And then we're going to need some redstone stuff. So let's grab some repeaters. I should only need two of those, but why not grab a bunch? I need some comparators. I should only need two of those. I will need some hoppers. Um, theoretically, I only need four, but um, I very well could need more if I don't set it up perfectly efficiently. I need some redstone torches. I know that. Uh, let's grab some regular redstone as well, because I do need some of that. Uh, I do have a bunch of repeaters. I know I need some repeaters to set up the dropper system, and I'm pretty sure I also need a couple comparators, how I've set it up in the past. So that seems to be most of the stuff, knock on wood, that I need. I'm going to grab some stone to spruce this up a little bit, although hopefully I'll be able to hide some of this system in the in a wall. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm not really sure where to set this up. Let's go ahead and set it up in the third basement of this building. What I'm going to do real fast is I'm going, going to give the system a little bit more power. And I don't mean that much more power. Whoops. Let's do that. Because these crystal growth accelerators, I'm going to have them be on all the time. I know that's not the most efficient way to do things, but that is perfectly fine with me as I have plenty of power. So let's clear out some space. Let's get some crystal growth accelerators. I need seven of them. Okay, and I already had seven, whoops. Glad I can see things. Anyways, these will be set up in a pattern like this. They will all be connected to the system here. Um, I want to have droppers on the... Yeah, let's do droppers on the top. And just to make things a little bit easier, let's use my nifty hammer here. And then that's just temporary. That's so I can place these droppers. These droppers need to be facing down. Otherwise, this won't work. I'm hoping that redstone on these crystal growth accelerators don't really interrupt them or anything. So now I need to place some hoppers underneath. And the hoppers... Actually, this is going to be kind of difficult. So let's place water here because we need water there. And then I need another water bucket. Let's actually grab two more water buckets. Because I want to keep one with me. Okay, so water goes right here. Let's actually get rid of that extra bucket. Okay, so the redstone for the droppers to get these things to work is not too, too difficult. I need to place comparators here to basically detect if there's anything in there. And then we need to run some redstone around over here and let's grab our our stone I actually need to put stone here as well I don't need redstone there I don't think I don't know why I put it there so and then we just put repeaters here and here Oh, whoops, I forgot. Uh, it is kind of essential to put repeaters here as well. Otherwise, you need a certain signal strength over one to get the system to function correctly. And then you'll have some things stuck in your droppers and you don't really want that. So that should be all right. Now, the next thing is we can go ahead and throw our MA interfaces here. We do need to connect those up to the applied energistic system. So let's grab some covered cable to do that. Is that black cover cable? I had regular, I'd rather go with blue. Just because I have a lot of blue cable in other spots. Although I'm using black over here, so what, whatever. So now that we have these things hooked up, we'll need to place the patterns, one in here and one in here. 
but for right now we're not going to worry about that um, we do need to connect these things up so we can go ahead and connect up that one like so I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and grab that water back because it's going to just be in my way. Yeah. It's just going to be annoying. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Um, let's hook these guys up. And just because I'm worried about things getting in the way, I will connect these two up on the top side as well uh, these things do not take up any channels so that is nice and convenient you know what i should probably shoot i can't connect up any of the others on the top side i really hope this doesn't get in the way of my sorting system or pseudo sorting system actually i need i just need more space down here actually So let's let's make a new way down here. Okay, so now I need some hoppers. Woof, this is gonna be difficult. I might actually have to remove some of these accelerators. I think I will. I think that's what we're gonna do. I think I'm going to remove this one and the one on the side over here. Just because I don't think I don't think the routing works with the applied energy six cable if I have that there. Um, it will slow the system down just a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. It doesn't need to be super fast or anything. So let's reinstall these comparators. Let's reroute this cable because now we don't need it to swing over here. Actually, I need that, whoops. So since I have the rest of them connected on the top side, what I can do is swing it from the middle and just go over like so. And that should give us plenty of space to play with our hopper stuff. So let's actually make a little bit more room here. I might even need just a shade more. Okay, hopefully that's good enough. So now I need to place hoppers down. And you know what? I need to go take a look at my sorting system because I already forgot some of it. So I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I've taken a look and I think we can go ahead and do this. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get a comparator. And I need to place comparators right above this block space. So let's go ahead and place down some cobblestone. Let's grab our comparators. Sweet, I can reach them. I definitely am going to need some more space over here, though. And I think I need a little bit more space underneath, too. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we will have hoppers right here. And I'm going to shift click them so they're facing the comparators. I'm not entirely sure I need to do that, but that's okay. Next thing I need to do is let's put down our modular storage, which needs to be right here. And we need to include a storage module in each of these. So that's done. And then we need hoppers that go into there, like so. OK, so next I need block here with some redstone on top. And then. blocks I need more redstone right here and then I need a block underneath with a repeater and that is facing the wrong way I know that the other one's facing the right way though and then we need a block right here and there needs to be a redstone torch here. 
Okay, so the mechanics of this thing, because I haven't explained yet, is that when there's a certain number of items in here, you will get a redstone comparator signal that will be uh, two or more, and it has to be two or more, so that it reaches this repeater, which flips this redstone torch to be off, which allows items to go through the hopper. And that's because if, the, if item hoppers are receiving a redstone signal, they will not allow items to flow through them. So now what we need to do is we need to get rid of some crap in my inventory. Uh, I will need some item conduits. In fact, let's go ahead and place another modular storage. Actually, no, let's just do an ME interface. You know what? I don't want to do that. Let's just keep an import bus. Let's get some covered cable, which I have already. Uh, let's go ahead and grab modular store. Let you know what? Let's just do a chest. Whatever. So how we're gonna do this is once the items get into this mod, these two modular storage units down here, they actually need to get imported into the applied energistic system somehow, and. What we can do is we can just set up some item conduits under here. Boom, boom, boom. This needs to be extract. It needs to be always on. This needs to be insert. And this needs to be extract, always on. So basically anything that goes into these modular storage units will go into this chest, which will be hooked up to a import bus and let's go ahead and get some uh, acceleration cards uh, just to speed that up okay so that's cool those should be all set up I okay so I actually need to remove those hoppers because I need to put water down there actually you know what no I'm not gonna do it from the uh, from the bottom side I'm gonna do it from the top side this is gonna be a pain in the butt actually no, it won't. I think there's an okay way to do this. So if I remove this one right here and place a temporary block right here, the water shouldn't be able to flow out and destroy a bunch of stuff. So we need a water block here and we need a water block over here. And now we can place down this crystal growth accelerator back where it needs to be. Okay, cool. So that should have avoided uh, destruction. Because redstone doesn't like water. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to grab some pure fluix crystals and pure certus crystals. And we need to place them in the hoppers here. Now, like I said, these hoppers will not allow things to go through them when they are receiving your redstone signal. These hoppers down here. So what we can do is we can place a bunch of fluix in here. But we can actually just do that. What we need to do is this. And what will happen is this will uh, take down the pure fluix up until a point and then it will stop. Okay, so that's where that went. So let's do the same thing over here. Uh, make sure we're not getting it in there. And then everything in here should be getting imported into the system. Now, the important thing is this should have stopped at 18. So there's 18 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So 22 items gives you a redstone signal. It's 22 or 23. Gives you a redstone signal of 2. Or, uh, never mind, of 1. If we go 1 or 2 more pure fluix more in there in that hopper, then the redstone signal will increase to 2, which will flip this off, which will allow items to go through. Now it's important that we have these pure fluix crystals here and the pure surface crystals over there so that this hopper cannot pick up the seeds once I start throwing them in the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some seeds and we are going to test this out. And I actually have them automated if I can spell seeds correctly because you know that's hard. If we throw seeds in here and let me double check that this is the Fluix version. We need to throw the Fluix seeds in here. It should activate this timer mechanism which activates the dropper which drops the seeds into the chamber and then they should grow. Let's do the same thing with the service seeds over here. And then let's set up a couple of patterns to have this automated. 
because I should have been th done that earlier, but I haven't. I'm not exactly sure how long it'll take to grow with three growth accelerators on each side, but it shouldn't be too, too long. So let's grab some seeds. Um, we do need to make more of these, but that's not really a big deal. So basically one seed should make one pure fluix. So this is one pattern. This is the other pattern. We need to insert these into the ME interfaces. Okay, so as we see right now, these are stopped. So this one was the Fluix version, so we need to throw that in there, and then the um, Certus version in there. Let's go ahead and tell this system, you know what? Let's make 100 of you. Let's make 100 of you. And the first part of the system seems to be working pretty well. Um, the dropper is dropping them in. It's receiving its items. Uh, the next... Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what we wanted. So I actually just need to reinsert these manually in here, and then they should drop out. I got kind of unlucky that I accidentally grabbed them. So anyways, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to keep an eye on these, and I, I can do that off camera. I'm also going to block this up uh, with stone to make it look nice. I'm going to uh, try to stay away. That way I don't accidentally grab the items. And then I'm going to be right back, and hopefully, hopefully we'll see the, these crafting recipes are finished. Okay, so the crafting is going. I have noticed that one has worked out in each of these, and that's the initial one that I threw in there. And as we see, some of the crafting is being completed, as in it's coming into the system as a pure flux crystal. So it seems that the system is working, which is fantastic. Now, I know the dropper likes to be a little, a little strange at times with how uh, items sometimes go out, out of the droppers at different directions which is why I left no space around, as in there's only one block space in which it can possibly go to, theoretically. Uh, hopefully that's true, and hopefully everything works out like it should, but it looks promising so far, and it looks like this automation is working, and that's fantastic, because I really like this system. I'm sure other people have built systems very similar, if not pretty much the exact same as this, but I haven't seen them, so I'm pretty proud of this system. Anyways, it, that's wrapping up point. So in today's episode, I built this system to automatically create pure flux crystals and pure certus crystals. It's a pretty nifty system, and I rather enjoyed making it. I also improved my reactor in this building over here so that I can power more turbines. Let's quickly uh, check in with that, and it looks like we can add a little bit more steam because that's not quite in the efficient zone of 1,800 or so RPMs. So I will probably... Uh, mess with that between episodes uh, and so that is uh, also also I forgot I threw in some acceleration cards into my molecular assemblers and that should speed up some crafting and that is nice as well so if you enjoyed today's episode give it a like if you enjoy automation in modern minecraft you should probably subscribe to my channel because that's kind of what I do Signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom 08, and I will see you next time.